Canada retaliates against China, booting the diplomat accused of targeting MP Michael Chong and his family. But as you heard in that clip there, the expulsion has not lifted the political pressure on the feds. Let's bring in the front bench to talk about that. With me this evening, former New Brunswick Liberal Premier Brian Gallant. He's the CEO of Space Canada. Conservative strategist Kate Harrison, who's vice chair at Summa Strategies. CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair and the Toronto Star's Queen's Park bureau chief Rob Benzie. Hi, everybody. Really pleased to see your connections are all intact. <laughs> uh, Brian, I, I'll start with you. Look, the, the opposition m members from all parties have been calling for one week for the government to do what it ended up doing yesterday. As you heard there and as we were just saying to the audience, there is still a lot of pressure on the government to do more. A lot of opposition members saying, why didn't you do this sooner? Why, from where you sit, do you think that political pressure has not abated with yesterday's decision? Uh, pretty simply put, uh, I think the opposition, I think the NDP, uh, the other parties are saying to themselves that this is a bit of an issue for the government. So anything they can do to kind of keep it alive is, is certainly something they're going to entertain. The, the idea that it took too long, uh, from a political point of view, uh, the earlier would have been better. No question about that. Um, but this is obviously a serious measure, and I'm sure that they wanted to ensure that they uh, considered all angles, considered all factors before making the decision. So uh, I, I would certainly want them to side on the uh, err on the side of caution, err on the side of ensuring that they thought of everything before making such a serious decision. Uh, nevertheless, admitting that the politics would have been a little easier had it been uh, a, a bit a bit earlier. Um, in, in terms of sort of doing more, I, I think this is something that we had heard for a few days for a reason that that people were putting pressure uh, on the government to do this because it is sort of uh, probably the right measure. It's it's the sort of right uh, right tone. It's the right uh, sort of reaction to what has unfolded. And then we, we obviously knew that, and the government knew, uh, and we've been talking about it for days, that there'd be retaliation from China, which there was. So, so look, I, I think, again, politics, sure, would have would have liked it to happen the night of, um, but, but I think given the seriousness of this measure, that it made sense for them to take time to do it right. Kate, I think, I think it makes sense to everybody that the government had big things to weigh, given that China's on the other end of this. But, like Brian said, from a political perspective, they provided a week that was essentially like a political vacuum, where all of us and the many panels that I do could talk day in and day out about what is taking so long. And, and Michael Chong himself could also fill that vacuum, saying, hey, I'm on the other side of this. Why haven't they done anything about it yet? And there is some political damage that, that's been inflicted on them as a result. For sure. And the calls are coming from within inside the House to do something about this. And I think, Vashi, uh, if this was one incident in isolation, if this was just the government dragging their heels on this particular, um, you know, allegation of interference, then maybe people would be understanding because, to your point, there are a lot of factors at play here. Of course, there's trade relationships, consular services, et cetera. I don't want to um, negate any of that, and I don't think the Conservatives do either. But the problem is the pattern, the pattern of dragging our heels around a decision on Huawei, the problem around dragging our heels around police stations popping up across Canada. So there's been five or six different instances in the last couple of years, uh, and certainly since this government took office, of... Uh, Chinese and foreign interference in a number of uh, in a number of capacities. So this added another log to the fire for critics of the Trudeau government uh, to point out that this is a, a pattern of mismanagement. It also keeps the government on their back foot at a time they have been trying really since the budget or even before then to get back on the offensive. They have not had a clean media day uh, in weeks. Uh, the Liberal convention did not provide a boost, in my opinion, in terms of changing the dial here. Uh, so it's a good day for the opposition whenever we're talking about foreign interference. It's interesting, Tom, because they did get a bit of a reprieve, and I think we've discussed that on our panel, right? But this almost changed the, the game, like did a 180 and brought them back to the beginning because they, they weren't even refuting... Uh, parts of this reporting, right? It, it, as they have in previous instances where they could say, hey, it's not all true. That's why we're assigning the former governor general to figure out how to, how to navigate this. Like in this instance, right away, nobody was disputing it. Then CSIS confirmed it. And then Michael Chong was able to communicate, as I said before, to Canadians about it. It seems like it's, you know, they're wearing it even a bit more as a result. Well, they're wearing it a bit more, but it's their fault. Because don't forget, after two days of dithering in the House, they finally came up with an answer which was, oh, 
CSIS knew, but they didn't tell us. And then it came out a few hours later, oh, CSIS had, in fact, done its job. But it wasn't until Mr. Trudeau had already upbraided CSIS and said, you know, and I've told them that this, this sort of thing has to make its way up the chain of command. Y you don't do that unless you know your facts. And over the weekend, he said, well, I gave the facts uh, as well as I could because that's what I knew at the time. He calls David Johnston an independent outside expert. I I'm a big fan on a personal level of David Johnston, a fine Canadian. But he was at the Trudeau Foundation in a key role up until the time that Trudeau named him to this. And part of what he has to look at is the behavior of the Chinese government and the Trudeau Foundation. So how can he be independent and objective doing that? Oh, he asked Morris Rosenberg to look at the work of the committee. But that independent committee was three people who worked for him, senior civil servants. And Rosenberg was the former president and CEO of the Trudeau Foundation. So this whole thing is incestuous. It's a, an attempt to you know, sandbag the whole process. We will We'll find out that there will, of course, be a commission of inquiry. There's no other possible alternative here. But what will be the terms of reference? And when will it actually get started? Remember, he gave Johnston a term that extends right up until Halloween, not just to Victoria Day, right up until Halloween. Is that to make sure that if ever this thing does get started, it won't interfere with an, an eventual election for the Liberals? So Trudeau's been wearing this thing. It's been his fault. It took him so long to do the obvious. And by the way, just to make this last point, it was only when the House of Commons was in the process of voting to force Trudeau's hand to expel that Chinese diplomat that he finally announced that he would expel the Chinese diplomat. Very true. That that motion happened yesterday. It, it included more than just expelling the diplomat. To be fair, it included police closing down the police stations, all the stuff which is very justified. Closing the police stations, establishing the foreign agents registry, which they've uh, said they'll do, and expelling the diplomat. But Tom's right. Uh, Rob Oliphant, the parliamentary secretary to Minister Jolie, Rob got up in the middle of that and made the announcement that they would expel the diplomat then. You have always kind of, uh, you know, made the point that I'm not sure this topic is what everybody at home is worried about right now. They're primarily concerned about cost of living and health care and things like that. Do you think this iteration of the story hits in a different way? I think it does a little bit, Vashi, because Michael Chong, everyone can relate to an elected official who is, whose family is being targeted, allegedly being targeted by a foreign government. And I think as soon as everyone heard that story, and yes, CSIS knew two years ago, and someone in the government knew two years ago, they should have done something about it then. They didn't. So the story comes out last week in the Globe and Mail, and uh, finally they, they, start, they, they do something a week later. And I think, it, I think people can relate to that at home. People are saying, well, wait a minute, this doesn't sound right. I, the, a lot of the other stuff about this, the China meddling is murky and confusing, and I'm not sure it resonates on, on, on Yonge Street or on Queen Street, where I am uh, here in Toronto. But I think something like the Michael Chong situation, it is relatable, and people can say, this just doesn't sound right. It's, it's, to Tom's point, I think the government is allergic to yanking off a Band-Aid. When, when you want to pull a Band-Aid off, just pull it off. These guys just seem to want to just drag it slowly, slowly, and pinch every hair they can until it's, everyone's crying in pain. It's, it's staggering. I mean, it's, the, it's some of the worst uh, communications uh, crisis management that I've ever seen. Even since making that decision, Brian, look, there's a lot of questions because Michael Chong says, hey, I looked at the intelligence and other MPs were targeted. I'm the only one specifically named. So many ministers today, uh, Bill Blair, Minister Blair, who was public safety minister then, Minister Medicino, who's now, everyone's getting asked, like, who are these MPs? Everyone getting, and like, there is not a direct answer to be found to a, a single question. And a lot more of the, hey, it's national security now. Yeah, and, and I think to, 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 to Mr. Benzie's point, I, there's no doubt that this is one of the maybe several examples over the last few months where they're a bit slower. But again, I, I, I'd like to think that it is because this is a serious matter and it's one in which they wanted to uh, measure all, all sort of uh, factors before taking any decisions. In terms of briefing MPs, and, and I know there's talks about briefing even provincial officials or, or municipal officials, I, honestly, I think those are no-brainers. I don't, I don't know why we would really debate that. I think giving the directive to ensure that if there is a credible threat, if there is, uh, some could even, even mention that it's 
it's just just a possibility one would want to be briefed at that point uh, I'll leave it to the experts to decide but I, I would certainly like them to err on the side of being a lot more forthright with their briefings for for elected officials that may be targeted by any government uh, so so I certainly think that that's a no-brainer and to your point if there are other MPs that have been have been named uh, and and it's serious enough that they were named in a brief that's probably enough uh, and and again I'll leave it to the experts to decide but uh, sort of prima facie for me if they were named in a brief it was serious enough that you're that you're putting it in there to, to, to let know, somebody know that this is happening so I I certainly would encourage them and I think the government is going to do some of this and I would encourage them to go even a little harder and a little faster uh, and and directing that we we do a lot better as a, as a country in briefing those that are elected that may have this uh, thrusted upon them if they were Kate to go harder to go faster to say to put more of that this out there and say like yes actually there are MPs in this brief and we are you know instead of we are going to do more and we're going to do briefings at this point and we're going to find out what we didn't know what the specific like none of it is transparent right now and and would they not be getting ahead of this story rather than reacting to it I think the only way to um, I think it's impossible to get ahead at this point but the only thing that could be done at this stage to satisfy critics even for a moment uh, is to, to have a public inquiry, get out in the open, not necessarily allegations against certain MPs because I think that becomes very tricky, but how is this information shared with who, um, you know, what is the context in which members of parliament or others are informed that they may be uh, under surveillance or what have you. That's the kind of stuff that a public inquiry might unveil. And I think uh, the last few days and the story around Mr. Chong, if we don't end up there, there's going to be a lot of very legitimate questions about how on earth that could be the conclusion. So between that and, to be totally frank, uh, firing a senior member of the Prime Minister's team, um, because I think previous governments absolutely would have done that by now for such mismanagement, I'm not sure what else the government can do to get ahead of the story. Okay. I got